Hi everybody. So I said I would go back and do kind of a little update to give you a backstory about my husband and I and how we got to where we are right now on our infertility journey. So about three and a half years ago, we decided that we wanted to go to the fertility doctor. It wasn't working on our own. We knew there had to be some problems. So we made an appointment with the doctor here, talked to him, went through some testing, and we really just kind of put it on the back burner. We just got this feeling that it wasn't the right time for us in our life. Um, in the summer of 2011, we went through a failed adoption. Um, we actually were gonna adopt a newborn baby domestically, and it fell through a couple of weeks before we were supposed to bring the baby home. So that was really sad, and after that, we just decided to wait a little while before we tried anything again. Um, we really actively went back, I want to say about two years ago, like to really, you know, trying, going to the doctor, getting something done about the situation rather than just sort of talking about it. Um, found a local doctor. We went and did two IUIs with him with just Clomid um, and a time cycle, which, you know, did not work. Um, and I decided I didn't like that doctor. He just wasn't very hands-on. He didn't even come to do the procedures for the IUIs. He um, had a nurse do it or a medical assistant, and I really just didn't like that. You know, you're spending a lot of money to have these procedures done, and you want to see the doctor. So we kind of let that go, decided to find a new doctor. Um, I asked a couple of friends of mine that have gone through infertility treatments, and they recommended a doctor here in this area who is absolutely wonderful. I love him. He is so hands-on. I see him every time I go to the doctor. He does my ultrasounds. You know, even if I'm just coming for blood work, I see his face and he says hello. And so, you know, we obviously made the right choice. He um, did two IUIs with the injectable medication I did Volistim. And those didn't work either. We actually found out through the process that the medication that makes you ovulate um, wasn't working. Um, it just, my body would not respond. So... He decided IVF would be the best choice, and we sort of agreed. You know, after going through four of those and spending all that money, you know, you want something to work. So we decided to do IVF, and we were very lucky that my insurance paid for it. So it worked the first time. It wasn't fun. I'm not going to lie. I didn't like the shots. I didn't like, you know, all the blood work. But it's what you go through when you want to have a baby. But it worked the first time. We were really pleasantly surprised. About ten weeks in... Um, I was getting very sick. I mean, nausea to the point I can't even explain. It was just more than morning sickness. Um, in the month of November, which would have been November of 2013, in a period of about 10 days, I got pneumonia, a urinary tract infection, and then I ended up with the shingles. So that was kind of the beginning of things going downhill, but we didn't really know that at the time. On my 32nd birthday, which was November 30th of last year, I woke up in just this pain I can't describe, which I had had since the night before. And it was almost like my stomach felt, you know, felt like it was going to explode. I don't know how else to explain it, but there was just so much pressure and I woke up with bleeding. So we hadn't even gone to see our OB yet. So I had to go back to the fertility doctor, which we went and he did confirm that I had had a miscarriage. Um, he was a little baffled because the baby was a perfect gestational size for where I was. And he told us at that point, you know, I feel like it's probably something with you and not the baby. You know, normally when you have a miscarriage, there can be genetic issues and that's why you have it. But he didn't really feel that way. Um, when we left his office, my husband said, you know, I feel like there's something else going on. This has been going on for too long. He called my primary care doctor who totally agreed and said, I want you to go to the ER. I'm admitting you, you know, we'll take care of the miscarriage and, you know, we'll see what else is going on. So I was admitted to the hospital. I spent five days there. They treated me for a kidney infection and some other things. My iron was low, potassium was low, you know, just a variety of different things. But we never really got a clear answer as to why I miscarried, you know, other than I was not feeling that well, but it didn't explain that the baby was this perfect gestational size that it should have been. So I went home five days later. I was out for about nine days, and my doctor sent me for 
a CT scan. He said, I just want to make sure everything's okay because I was still having quite a bit of pain in my right lower back. That wasn't where my kidneys were. And, you know, he said, after five days of IV antibiotics and pain medicine, you know, you should be feeling better. So sent me for a CT scan. And about five minutes after we left the hospital from the CT scan, his office called and said, you have to turn around right now and go back to the hospital. You're being admitted. They found an abscess in your colon and it needs to be drained immediately. So, you know, we're completely shocked. Like, how has no one figured this out before? Or why didn't I really show any more symptoms than just not feeling well? Because this is like very serious. It could be deadly. You can turn septic very quickly. Um, so I turned around, went back to the hospital. I was admitted. Uh, the next day, they actually put a drain in to try to drain that infection out from my colon area. And two days later, they had to reposition it. It wasn't draining. So I spent nine days in the hospital that round. And when my doctor sent me home, which was December 22nd, so it was right before Christmas, he told me, you know, this could come back. I'm not guaranteeing that you're not going to have to have surgery to have this fixed. It could be next week. It could be a month. It could be a year. But I'm not going to guarantee that you're not going to have to have surgery on this eventually. Um, made it through the holidays. Still didn't feel that great. You know, was definitely recovering from being ill. And... He sent me for another CT scan, I want to say like the 26th or 27th of December, so right after Christmas he sent me back for another one as a follow up. Um, called me the same day and said, look, it's come back, the infection is there, you're going to have to have surgery, there's no other way to get around it, they're going to have to go in and repair that. Um, he said, you know, it's up to you, you can wait till after the new year and schedule it then if you can stand it or just wait until... You know, you need pain meds and then go to the hospital and we'll put you in then. I made it to New Year's Eve without pain meds and then it was just too much to bear. So we went into the hospital on New Year's Day. I had my surgery on January 3rd and when they opened me up, it was much worse than they thought it was going to be. I had organs that were turning black from the amount of infection that was in my stomach. It was actually pushing my organs against my abdominal wall. Um, my left ovary and fallopian tube, which was already being planned to be removed when we decided I needed surgery, was turning black. So my OB actually took that out. And then my appendix was black. It was basically dead. So they went ahead and took it out as well. Um, and then they had to repair the colon. It's basically a genetic defect that I had. They had to go in and fix it, um, resection some of my colon. I was very close to needing a colostomy, which I'm so thankful I didn't have to do. Um, and I spent nine days in the hospital that round. I was extremely ill, 24-hour um, antibiotics. I had iron supplements. Um, I had to have a blood transfusion, which um, me, I ended up having to get a pick line because I needed the blood transfusion and they were going to have to take me off my pain meds. And this was the day after my surgery. So there was, I was like, there's no way I can do that. I just had surgery. So I ended up getting a pick line, which for those of you who have had those done, when you're dehydrated and your veins are already rolling, getting a pick line is not fun. So anyway, um, during my ninth day in the hospital, my surgeon came in early one morning and said, you know, let's get those drains out. Let's get ready to send you home tomorrow. And... He got one drain out just fine, and the other one would not come out. It was completely stuck. There was no way around it. He said, well, I'm going to have to open you back up today, get that drain out. So on January 10th, I went back into surgery again a week later and had the drain removed, and that caused an additional five days in the hospital. So that added a lot of time to recovery. It was very painful the second time around. For those of you who have had abdominal surgery, you know how painful it is the first time, so imagine having it two times in a week. Um, but I finally got to go home on January 16th, and during that last day in the hospital, they uh, did some blood work and determined that I had a blood clotting disorder called antiphospholipid syndrome, which could have been another reason I miscarried. They're still not completely sure, and they basically never will be, but it definitely could have contributed to it because it's very common for women with that disorder to have miscarriages if it's not treated. So... I'm on blood thinners for life now. Um, I normally take a pill every day, but since we've started this process, I've had to switch over to injections of heparin twice a day, 
which aren't fun, but you know, it's, it's part of what you do. You know, all of this, none of the shots are fun. The medication's not fun, but it's what you do to have a baby. And hopefully here in three days, we'll get lucky again and this will work. But that's the 10 minute condensed version of my story. And, you know, as you can tell, we've been through a lot. So we're really hoping that this works because, you know, we don't know what our next step is going to be. You know, do we try surrogacy? Do we adopt again? All those things take time and money. So, you know, we're just really hoping that this works out. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'm getting ready to go to dinner with my mom and my husband when he gets off work. And I'm just sitting here right now. I'm going to show you my little puppies. This one right here. Can you see her? Where is she? She just had surgery five days ago. She had a little infection in her uterus, so she had some surgery. And then, I don't know if you can see my other one. She's over there. She's under her blanket, sleeping. But I came home and one of them had pooped in the floor and the other one had thrown up on the floor. So that's how my evening is going so far. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll try to do another update tomorrow, probably tomorrow night. Um, we have a sales meeting at work, so I'm going to be staying in a hotel room by myself. I'll probably be bored, so maybe I'll have something interesting to update then. But um, if you like my video, please like it. Please subscribe. I'm going to try to do it more often, you know, as time allows. I do work a full-time job and, you know, I have a lot of things going on, but hopefully I get some extra time. But thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.